Hi, uh, this is Timur Dar with The Beat, chatting with the talent behind The Legend of Ox Machina. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Love your backdrop. Yeah. <laughs> um, so all this time I've been um, stuck at home, I've kind of rediscovered uh, Monty Python, and it just occurred to me how much the trajectory of critical role parallels that of the Monty Python troupe. Um, in broad terms, at least, um, you know, a group of fan friends coming together, creating their own thing that kind of blew up and became this huge multimedia franchise. And with Vox Machina, the series, just like their first film, um, Holy Grail, it just, it's funny how to see how the initial difficulty of finding funny, funding, but how it eventually found this huge success. So I'm curious. Uh, how has it been uh, to see how the growth of Critical Role since your early heyday? Well, that, that's a that's a very generous uh, comparison. Obviously, we are all enormous Monty Python fans, uh, and I, I can say just for myself, I've been surprised at every turn um, where our stories continue to 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 go from a live play show to a comic book, and now to an animated series uh, on Prime Video. It's it's been nothing short of a, a dream, and um, we're very grateful for the the audience and the community that we that we do have, and uh, we hope it just uh, continues from here. Sammy, how do you feel? It's uh, it's really cool. Um, I, I hadn't thought about the comparison with Money Python before, but it um, it has been a really sort of unique and organic um, way that this show has come about, um, starting as friends, becoming people who played a game together, and then people who run a small company together and who reach out to uh, fans for support and get overwhelming you know, Kickstarter backing uh, to make it a real animated series uh, on a major platform like this. is just, it's nothing that we could have scripted. Um, uh, but it's, it just feels, I, I can't imagine doing it any other way, you know, like it, it just feels right. Um, and it's, it's been a wild ride, uh, uh, personally, but also it's been amazing to have my, my best friends with me along, along, uh, alongside me the whole, the whole way. And it's going to be so great to, to watch everybody, um, when the show comes out and see how it all blows up. We all get to watch together. Um, keeping with that Monty Python comparison, it seems especially fitting because there's a great reference to Holy Grail with um, Travis's character, Strongjaw, and that classic, hilarious, iconic Black Knight scene. You know, it's just a flesh wound. Um, so, but, um, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been diving deep into Python history, and I was really interested to read that Terry Gilliam, he said that while the other Pythons were more interested in the comedy, he was more focused on creating a believable world so the jokes would land better. Uh, for Vox Machina, I definitely get the sense of it being the same vein as um, Edgar Wright's brilliant uh, Cornetto trilogy, how it kind of starts out as a parody of a you know famous genre, but then by the end, it kind of um, it embraces the tropes. So Brandon, for you, I'm curious how you maintain that balance of humor and drama? Yeah, I mean, I don't see, uh, you know, Legend of Vox Machina as a parody. I mean, I think it's very much like a legitimate fantasy. It's just that there's, you know, humor involved, equal amounts of heart, you know, um, there's also equal amounts of adventure and, and action and thrills and, and horror, you know, throughout the first season. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily put it in the same realm as say like a parody, like, you know, like Holy Grail, which I love one of my you know favorite movies, um, you know, it, it, and it was, it's a, you know, it's a daunting task. The fact that we've adapted like, you know, this very elaborate, intricate campaign into an animated series has been, you know, especially early on, it was, it was kind of difficult figuring out what's going to work, what's not going to work. But, you know, the team is so great. Sam and Travis is so awesome to work with it's just been a blast. Like it's been, it's been so much fun figuring out like what we're going to keep, what we're going to uh, leave behind, you know, how it's all going to gel together and, and figuring out their emotional journeys, which for me is the most important part of any series that you work on is you really want to get to the core of who these characters are and, and the journey that they're on. Awesome. 
Um, so, Sam, in addition to being a talented actor, you've also established yourself as a top tier casting and voice director. I was just um, texting with my friend, Christina Malizia, who you worked with on DC Superior Girls, and she was just singing your praises, working with her experience working with you. Um, so, for Vox Machina, you have uh, an amazing, wonderful supporting cast like David Tennant and Tony Hale, who you've worked with before on DuckTales and his um, Archibald's Next Big Thing. So I'm curious, the process of casting them, was it just really as simple as just approaching them directly and asking them, or did you have to go through the formal channels? Well, uh, luckily, me and my fellow castmates are um, well established in the voiceover and animation world. So um, we, we had uh, a bunch of contacts and a bunch of friends uh, who are well-established voice actors, um, you know, veteran voice actors, and also some folks who have done film and TV and who are also great voice actors. And putting together the cast of Legend of Vox Machina, um, it involved a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, there was a few times that we would just sort of text somebody that we knew or, or call them up and say, hey, do you want to come play around with us? And it was as easy as that. Um, but, you know, obviously there's some heavy hitting actors in our in our cast. And for those folks, um, we had to go through their, their representation, their agents, their lawyers, whatever. And um, the way we did that was just by sort of telling our story to them. Um, and we found that it was really compelling uh, to, to just sort of say how Critical Role came about uh, and to show them our passion for the project um, and how these characters were, were sort of invented by a group of friends uh, and became something that was much more popular than anyone could foresee. And uh, actors, big and small, uh, they respond to that kind of passion. And um, uh, the actors that we got to come in and play some of these guest roles were just really excited to work with, with people who were so heavily invested in the thing that they were making. Um, and, that's been something that's been really guiding this whole project from from start to finish is just this is a, this is our baby we're really pouring our our time and our our energy and all of it into making this as good as it can possibly be and people people respond to that and make it their own as well um who come aboard and we're happy to collaborate with them um so i think both fans and entertainers are eagerly awaiting for conventions to really return to their former glo glory, particularly uh, San Diego Comic-Con, whether it'll be this year or next year, we'll have to wait and see. But I know I'm sure you guys are eagerly waiting when you guys can bring Vox Machina to San Diego. For, uh, have you guys, I know maybe it's too soon or maybe even your Wildlife Fantasies, have you been contemplating it and maybe perhaps thinking Hall H, that's kind of the dream. Uh, all, I think I can tell you the thing that I'm most excited about is um, is seeing the cosplay of our of our characters from Legend of Vox Machina because uh, they're you know they're slightly different from from prior designs of the characters and they they even do some costume changes through the through the season that are pretty fun. Um, so I'm really excited to see what, what the people out there can put together, whether it's at a convention or just posting on Instagram or whatever. I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. San Diego Comic-Con is always an amazing event and we, we certainly miss it. Hall H seems like a, like a tall, a tall order, but I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like, uh, a lot of things surprise us these days, but, uh, you know, we're just really excited to see what, what the audience thinks. It's been almost three years working on it now and, you know, the great thing with our Thursday night show is that there is some pretty immediate feedback, whether through chat or social media, we can always get a sense of how people are reacting to things. And so we're, we're very eager to see what people think of what we've cooked up. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, Comic-Con probably, what, 10 years from now? When it's over? <laughs> on Mars. <laughs> on Mars. <laughs> on Mars. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't take that long, but... Um, MarsCon. Mars. <laughs> We'll have to wait and see. Um, hopefully, who knows how many seasons we'll have of Vox Machina. Um, guys, it's been an immense pleasure. I can't wait for the entire world to uh, finally see The Legend of Vox Machina. Thank Us you very too. much. Thank you.